Welcome back to another video guys and in this week's video we're going to take a look at my bushcraft backpack. So thank you once again for joining me here today. As I've mentioned in this week's video we're going to take a look at this bag here which is my go-to bushcraft setup for when I'm out in the woods. This is what I'm going to take pretty much all of the time. Uh, we'll get the binoculars out of the way if you want to know that's to do with my EDC link up here for that video so the bag itself is the TA Trekker by TA Outdoors he's a English YouTube outdoor bushcraft youtuber uh, I will link him in the description go check him out I will also there will be links to every product mentioned here today in the description to the best of my abilities it's about a 25 litre back uh, backpack roughly perfect for uh, EDC uh, or bushcraft EDC kind of in this case uh, and for a kind of daily driving um, as you can see we've got the two buckles the top is a top loading rucksack we've got two side pouches and um, turning it round pretty simple on the back here uh, you've just got your two uh, shoulder straps, they are quite substantially padded though, which is nice. A sternum strap, which isn't actually big enough for me, but I'm going to be working on replacing this. And the only other thing I've got here is my pacing beads, which we will come back to. So, before we have a look at what's actually in my bag here, um, I want to kind of discuss kind of my rationale behind the bag um, and kind of my thoughts when it comes to daily driving or daily bushcraft activities so one of the first things is you have to ask yourself what are you actually doing when you're out practicing bushcraft for me it's usually you know fire lighting carving and things like that but also a lot of the time I'm moving quite a lot of distance either to get to a location or I'm doing a bit of a bushcrafty hike something along those lines so in that scenario you don't want the pack to weigh too much and that is exactly what I've gone for here I don't know the exact weight um, but I'm kind of past that but not over packing your bag and having stuff that you're not actually going to use um, and that's one of the benefits of keeping your bag quite small something like 25 liters or less uh, kind of that day pack size is it restricts you from over packing now there is days where I would take more than this uh, if for a specific task. I might even take a larger rucksack if I was running same, some sort of uh, more substantial outdoor course, uh, which more about that in a little bit. But for me being out by myself practicing bushcraft, this is kind of the perfect size. Now, I do quite a lot of outdoor stuff. I've been in the outdoor kind of interest zone, I guess for quite a long time and I I have quite a large span of the stuff that I do from water sports, kayaking, stuff like that to bushcraft to hiking. I try my very hardest to separate hiking and bushcraft as two separate. So my hiking kit is a different kit to this. There may be some crossover but it's quite it's usually different and if you want to see a video on my hiking kit uh, please leave a comment down below and let me know but in terms of bushcraft you know that's what, what this is focused on and um, so the stuff that's in it is very much in uh, is very much designed for that role one of the other important factors when it comes to a bushcraft bag is it has to be comfortable right and this comes back to the weight thing but also just the pack itself it needs to be comfortable it needs to be packed properly and um, so that the weight's loaded and you need to be able to access the stuff frequently. Um, the, the key factor here is that this is not a bushcraft overnight bag. Uh, no way could I get an overnight out of this. Now with what's in it, I could probably get by if I had to uh, spend the night out, but the idea behind this bag is not that plan. Um, so if you're thinking where is this sleeping bag or things like that, there's not going to be any of that in here because this is not an overnight bag. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what I carry in my bushcraft backpack. So, right here on the outside, one of the first things that I have is my gloves. Now this, these are a cheap pair of 
leather gardening gloves. They're fleecy lined, so they act both as a protective glove but also as a warm layer. Um, often when I'm out, these will actually be on my belt, but whilst I'm getting out, they live on the outside of my pack. There is no kind of fasteners or anything like that on the outside of these. Um, and with them being that leather, they can withstand some heat from a fire. Now, they're by no means fireproof, but taking hot pans and stuff off, they certainly help. I already mentioned my pacing beads that I carry here on the back. So, let's up. we've got these side pouches, first of all. So, uh, by the way, all the zippers on this bag here are YKK, military grade uh, zippers, so no fear of them breaking. One of the most important things when we're out, a good water bottle. So, uh, on this side of the pack, I carry my Camelback one litre water bottle with some stickers on there. Um, this isn't a lot of water, and sometimes I might carry more. Um, however, I'll come on to later why this is all I'm carrying in terms of actual liquid water. But I never leave home without a filled water bottle um, because water is one of the most important things. In the other side, right on the top, to supplement the water bottle, I have my Katadin B3 water filter. So if I'm somewhere like I am today with the river here in front of me, I can go fill up with water um, and be nice and safe uh, and not have to get worried about, you know, uh, bacteria, giardia, cryptosporidium, things like that. If you want to see a video on the cat I didn't be free, leave a comment down below and let me know. So, further in this pocket, I have my Sea to Summit titanium spork. I have a windshield. This is an OEX windshield here. Just folds open. And down at the bottom here, you've seen this many a time now, my brew kit. So to run through this, it comes in this mesh bag. Got a life uh, venture silicone folding cup. So I've always got a cup. Inside, it's the uh, Luxada Titanium 750 milliliter pot. Inside of that, I always have at least one coffee. I have the pot supports, and I have my Trangia Spirit burner. If you want to see more information on this, check out the standalone video that I have done on my brew kit up here. Everything that I've got on the outside of the pack. So to open it up, we really just unbuckle the buckles and straps are all military grade and the lid folds open right here in these top sleeves here i keep my first aid kit um this is quite a large first aid kit uh primarily because this serves both as a personal first aid kit but also as a group first aid kit for small groups especially when i'm out with the scouts and stuff um if you want to see a again if you want to see standalone videos on any of the equipment that i'm mentioning they'll either be linked down below or leave a comment uh, to see them there will be a video coming up soon, hopefully, on my first aid kit. Uh, this pack has some nice storage features here along the front. So the obvious one here is my axe. You've seen this plenty of times now. This is my Rainier's Bushcraft Grants Forest Brooks Small Forest Axe. Um, perfect size for me. Um, I've recently done some felling with this, um, but also for splitting and all of that. It's good for making kindling. Uh, but it's also good for larger logs and it's really nice and easy to sharpen. Still razor sharp and it comes with a decent axe mask. Next, to complement the axe, I have my saw. The Baco Laplander folding saw. It's a fantastic piece of kit here. Um, I prefer, I've not used the Silky, so I can't comment which I prefer, I'm going to look into getting one. But so far I've been really impressed with the Baco, really good uh, flexible blade. You'll struggle to snap these, and the, you can actually see the tip on this one here is a little bit bent. Um, but that's easy enough to unfix. 
um, and something new that I have learned about the Baku Laplander is that it actually does very well at cutting bone. Additionally, as because this was designed originally as a hunting saw, um, and while silkies and things like that will cut bone, this does it very well because it's designed to do it. But additionally, it cuts wood just as well, but maybe not quite as fast as the silkies. And because of the green colour, uh, of the original Laplanders, I have an orange Landlord on there, so I never lose it. I carry it in this Journeyman Handcrafts leather belt sheath, uh, so it's got the loop there so you can put it on your belt. It's got the brass D-ring, so you could attach a dangler. I don't actually wear this on my belt anymore with the Fiori Vida Pro trousers that I wear. Um, this can just go down there, that's typically where I carry it. But to keep it protected and keep it kind of stored easily, I carry it in the sheath. And the other important cutting tool is, of course, my knife. So this is my TBS Boar uh, bushcraft knife. As you can see, it needs a bit of a clean. It has been battered to bits. It's been used loads. It's really good. I love this knife. Uh, quite easy to sharpen. It's got a bit of a drop point to it. Comfortable handle. Weighty. It's a weighty knife, so it's not good for delicate carving but it is good for that heavy duty carving work of maybe making a tent stake um, or a batoning, things like that. You've got that very nice red liners. And again, I've put a brightly colored lanyard on that so it doesn't get lost. Um, uh, I'm gonna be getting a review out on this knife because I've been using it for a, uh, you know quite a long time now. I'm gonna get a review out uh, so that you guys can know whether it's a good knife. Just got the standard sheath here um, with my little paracord modification to make the belt loop slightly smaller so it sits slightly higher on my belt. We have a drawstring closure here, uh, just allows it to cinch in a bit. So right in the top, one of the first things I have here is my smock. Um, you've seen this plenty of times, if you want to know more about this, check out the video up here for my, uh, my bushcraft and outdoor clothing. Um, this basically acts as my shell layer here in the woods or out in the woods doing bushcraft. I know I'm not really in the woods today, but that's the sides. Um, it's currently December. I may, one of the things that's not in here is an, uh, like a warm layer. Um, this actually does a very good job at cutting the wind. So if it's wind that's the issue, I can do good. And obviously what I've got already on this fleece in particular does a very good job. It's quite mild today, it's about four or five degrees. Um, if it was colder, I might add that extra layer, but that smock does very good, especially if I'm wearing something like this more synthetic uh, fleece here. This smock does a very good job at keeping me safe around fires and things like that, and it's got a decent hood on it. Next, we have probably one of the, a very important piece of kit. I have a tarpaulin. Um, I know this says DD Tarp 3x3, this is not my 3x3 tarp from DD, that is kept separately in a dry bag. I've decided not to use that for an everyday a kind of bushcraft day sack situation because it's a bit big, it's a bit bulky, it's a bit heavy and quite frankly I don't need 3 meters by 3 meters just for the sake of it. The idea of having a tarp in this kind of bag is not because I'm guaranteed to put it up when I go out, but it's in case, oh, the weather's turning, it's going to rain, let's get a tarp up. So instead, what I've gone for here is my ex-military, uh, my military surplus camouflage tarp. It's got the guy lines pre-attached to the bottom. I don't have tent pegs with me, that's maybe something that I might add, but I can additionally tie it off the trees or make some tent pegs. Uh, there are some holes in this tarp, but quite frankly, it will turn away a shower. Um, and I'm not too worried about it getting damaged or anything. I'd quite happily hang this quite close to a fire. Um, so that is a very good option. Um, it's going to be larger than something like the Helicon Tex uh, poncho that a lot of people use. Um, so I could still use this for multiple people. If I was going to do a group activity, I'm more likely to take my 3x3. Um, down the hydration sleeve kind of pocket at the back that comes in this pack, I've got my sit mat. This is my Trekmate sit mat. Really, really good piece of kit. Uh, probably replace this soon. It's starting to get a bit worn out. But they do really good insulating you from underneath. 
uh, for kneeling around a fire, for sitting on, or quite frankly even for putting your shavings on too, uh, when you're making feather sticks or anything along those lines. Very good option, and in fact I'm going to use it right now. Also down that back pocket I have my the rest of my navigational equipment here, so I have a map of the area that I'm going to be in, as well as a silver compass and I carry a pencil in here for uh, doing markings on the map and stuff. Um, this does have a lanyard on this waterproof case. Um, I don't know the brand of the case, no idea, but I put a lanyard on here so if I do want to carry it uh, separately because it's got that little carabiner on there, I can clip it to the outside of my pack and things like that if I'm doing some navigation work whilst I've got the pack on. Um, I don't often carry maps and stuff for doing bushcraft, but it's handy to have, especially um, considering what I'm going to be starting to do shortly. So, so I'm going to be starting to run outdoor workshops and courses uh, under my new business, uh, Bonfire Adventures. So, have, for example, having things like the map with me might come in handy if we're doing some navigational stuff. If you're interested in checking out any of my workshops or courses, head over to Bonfire Adventures on Facebook or click the link in the description. Uh, the first course is available now. It is happening on January 22nd. Um, it will be a basic fire lighting course. So if you're interested in checking that out, get over there quickly because the spaces are limited to five people. So continuing through the pack here, down the bottom in this little camouflage bag here, you'll have seen this before, this is my weather kit. Now when I'm out hiking, this has a couple of extra items in it, but today all that's in this is some buffs, some neck snoods, I've got a couple of them, um, because they're really good, uh, you can do lots of different things with them, and I've got a warm hat. For bushcraft and when I'm in the woods, I don't need much more than this. I, normally if I was out hiking, I'd have my gloves in here, but of course I've got the the leather gloves and I would also have waterproof trousers but I don't tend to use waterproof trousers for bushcraft. If it was going to be a particularly wet day and I knew that I might add them in. A couple of things left. In this pouch here, um, this little molly pouch, I've got a couple of notebooks so I've got my regular yellow right in the rain notebook. Uh, sometimes this will live in here, sometimes this will live in my pocket. This is good for doing nav stuff, for writing down grid references, writing down notes, uh, things like that. The other notebook that I've got in here is also from Right in the Rain, but this is what I'm starting to work on as a bit of a uh, wild plants and uh, wild plants and edibles book. So, for example, there we have uh, Hazel, my page on Hazel, so that's just a little field journal. Um, that I'm starting to set up for bushcraft um, so that lives in there, that's handy some other things might end up in here like wild edible guides and things like that and to go along with it I've just got a little mechanical pencil uh, better than regular pencils for the woods and a little ballpoint pen so that's that and last but not least is this little kit so this is what I refer to as my possibles pouch, my possibles kit. Um, this is the Maxpedition pouch here. Uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but I'll pop it on the screen. Uh, this is a nice pouch. I've actually got quite a lot of stuff in here today. So let's take a look at what I carry in my possibles pouch. So, opening up the pouch here. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff in this kit. So we'll start down here with one of the most important ones, a good head torch, this one here is from Varta. Even if I'm coming out at nine in the morning, I'm still gonna take a head torch with me because you never know what could happen. You could get caught short and be stuck out in the dark. To go with that, I carry my spare batteries here. So this is just one of these uh, kind of like tablet kind of tubes. You get things like electrolytes and stuff in them wrapped in some duct tape to keep it more protected. And I've got a bunch of spare AAA batteries in there. These uh, tubs are waterproof so that is super good. Next to that carry a sharpie. Uh, this can be used for lots of different things, labeling, 
uh, you know, leaving notes, writing on those, writing the rain notepads, whatever it might be. Beside that, I've got a bunch of paracord. So I've got a hunk of about five meters of paracord here uh, in orange, specifically in orange because this is backup cord and can be used for emergency things. Uh, you could use it for leaving kind of signals of which direction you went uh, and things like this if you needed to. But also additionally, it's just spare cord. I also carry another mechanical pencil in here. Along with the power cord, I carry some bank line. This is just a small amount of bank line, but it will still do a lot of things. This is good for, um, you know, tying prussics and things if I needed to use this cord as a ridge line. Speaking of ridge lines, however, uh, on this side, I carry my quick deployment ridge line. So this would go together with my tarpaulin um, to create a shelter and it can also be used just for hanging gear up behind this side I carry a roll of one inch Gorilla Tape that is really good uh, duct tape is actually flammable as well so that is an ignition source along with that I carry a folded up bit of uh, two inch wide Gorilla Tape on this side is, there's a lot of fire lighting stuff, so I carry a lighter. Um, so just, you know, standard lighter with some duct tape round, wrapped around it there to keep it safe, but also uh, as ignition source. It's important to carry more than one means of lighting fire, so I additionally carry one of these cheap ferro rods. Um, I have a high quality one in my pocket, but for if whatever reason I don't have that, I have one of these cheap ones they throw nice big sparks so that's super good I carry a carabiner in here um, you know it could be used for hanging up this pack uh, or hanging up my main bag or anything like that not a climbing rated carabiner though I carry a little pair of fine tipped tweezers here uh, these are super good for taking splinters out and things like that um, but there's lots of other uses and this is just a spare I obviously do carry in my first aid kit Clipped onto the little keeper here, I have a SAK, a Swiss Army knife. This isn't an actual Swiss Army knife, but it still serves the purpose. So you've got a small blade, a big blade, uh, a little flathead, a bottle opener and kind of sharp little knife, corkscrew and an awl, which is one of the most useful tools of this. So I carry that there. And then down behind this side, I carry my anchor uh, 5000 milliamp hour battery bank and cable for my phone uh, and that allows me to charge my phone up whether I'm filming videos or just needing to keep communications on the go and that is everything that I carry in this pouch I don't carry anything on the outside or anything like that um, and there is still room to add more to this pouch um, I will, I might do a standalone video in a few months once I've got this kit really used. This is quite a brand new kit to me. Uh, I set this up myself, of course, but once I've used it for a while and I've added and taken things out, I will do a review on it. So there we are. That is my Bushcraft backpack. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Let me know if you think there's anything I've missed or you want to know why I'm carrying something in a little bit more detail. But uh, I get a lot of use out of this pack, so it's really good. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're new here, please subscribe as well. Until next time, bye for now.